Since the internet loves videos and thinks everything should come in bar form, I've put together this video to demonstrate my Raspberry Pi acting as a disk drive for a Commodore 64. This is my Raspberry Pi mounted to a piece of plywood as a case. I have a little power supply that I stole from a dead Netgear switch, some external connectors, and a breadboard. It's connected directly to the Commodore 64 IEC serial bus. The only circuitry used for that is three level shifters. There's no Arduino or AVR or PIC microcontroller. The Commodore 64 is a standard Commodore 64. There's nothing special about it except for the Ethernet card that I have installed in the back. On the Raspberry Pi, I'm in a directory which contains Contiki and all of the internet programs that it includes. I'll start my software. And then on the Commodore 64, I'll have it get a directory listing. You can see it lists all the same files. Uh, it's even got the file sizes, and there's a lot of blocks free because the Raspberry Pi has a lot more storage than a floppy disk does. Let's load the web browser. This will take quite a bit of time. The Commodore 64's IEC bus is very, very slow. It's about twice the speed of a 2400 baud modem. You can see over on the Raspberry Pi, it does continually update the progress to let you know how far along it is sending the file over to the Commodore 64. Okay, now that it's loaded, let's run the web browser. It'll go back and get a bunch of files, uh, like the config file and the driver files. Once it gets everything, we should be able to get on the internet and browse the web. You can see it's kind of slow rendering the page, and when I want to scroll down a page, it actually has to go out and get the file again and then re-render it from a different location. It's neat, but I don't think this browser is really very useful. That's it for now. My software for doing this has been released as open source on GitHub. If you want to know more, check out my blog at incentricity.com.